6.05 and the Conservation Commission meeting will come to order. First order of business is the review of the minutes from the last meeting and then the review of minutes from the site walk. So from the November 8th meeting, I have uh, some items. I'm sorry, November 21st. Regular, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, they, no, 21st November was 8th. the workshop. Yeah, you were, you were good. To 8th was the regular meeting, yeah. <laughs> so um, under three conditional use permit requests, A, uh, second paragraph, last sentence, the only outflow is through the culvert. This was laid in a pre-existing swale. The culvert is 12 inches in diameter uh, sewage pipe. I just wanted to add ribbed to the 12 inch diameter sewage pipe. Um, actually, before that, uh, second paragraph, E. Smith Kenyon questions the direction of flow. I'm not sure what I put there, sorry. Um, third paragraph, applicant states the pond uh, was dug by a previous owner and um, I would uh, call out the pond and stream and that um, oh, we didn't get the data that did we okay All right, page two, the third paragraph down, um, second sen third sentence, there was additional cutting in 2008. This was before the current buffer ordinance. Actually, there's a missing I there uh, in ordinance, but the prior ordinance was governing. Um, I would strike prior and was governing and I would replace prior with contemporaneous. And replace was governing with buffers were the same as they are today. Following paragraph, work on the gravel pit was outside the current uh, buffer ordinance I would replace was with may have been. And that's all I have. Yeah, I, I just had one additional thing and it's the under, uh, let's see, page three, section C, where um, number three, I think you say follow, following up with land law, I think lawyer was what we discussed, right? Not land law, but we'll be talking about land law. Collins, you good? Any other revisions or comments? Is there a motion? <coughs> Second it. As amended, uh, amended, is that what the motion? Oh, okay. So there's a motion to accept the minutes as amended and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion passes and um, next is the Workshop meeting of November 21st. When you're ready. Um, section uh, 1A, the second paragraph, second sentence, 
noted he is uh, noted he is also considering removing additional pine trees in the future and, and inquire about removal of vegetation that overhangs the pond. Um, if we could just add a note that I had indicated that a new conditional use application will be required. Uh, I would just say since we're at that section, it was also um, and material in the pond. To remove remove material that was in the pond. Okay, page two. Second paragraph. Second sentence. Uh, Davis stated the flow has remained the same with, with or without the pipe. I would just like to add, though, there was no uh, recent outflow evident. Third paragraph, I just would add. Uh, and trees to the last sentence. Sixth paragraph. There was a brief discussion regarding the ex existing vegetation on site. Invasive plants were discussed but not noted on site as part of this review. Um, I would put a comma with, pos with the possible exception of aquatics. Last paragraph, third sentence, he noted the cattails have been reestablished. Um, I would insert, he noted that the cattails that had been removed have been reestablished. Last page, when you're ready. Second paragraph. Um, third sentence, he noted that the pond level would, rem would not remain so consistent without the pipe and rock modifications he had completed. Um, got rather a lot to add there. Um, so I apologize, but however, the commission was shown an outlet at the other end of the pond. The entire uh, disturbed area was covered with fill and there's no healthy soil. Grading at the north end of the property has changed to the point that there is approximately an eight to 10 foot drop off into what looks to have been uh, filled previous, previously uh, existent intermittent stream.
and that there are, I think there were four very large boulders placed there at the edge. And that's it. Mr. Dodds, do you have anything? I do not. You covered everything. All right. We have a motion. I believe that you were the only other one there. The uh, so um, motion to accept the uh, site walk workshop notes as amended. Um, I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. There's two abstentions, I assume? Okay. So, uh, motion carries. Okay. Yeah. All right. Public comment. Is there anyone interested in commenting? All right, next up item of business is conditional use permits. Michael Davis is seeking a conditional use permit for after the fact excavation and alterations within the repairing and wetland buffer on a property located at 25 Otis Road in the residential single family R1 district, Assessor's Map 31, Lot 49, CUP 3, 2023. And would you please come up? Okay, so the commission uh, visited the property on the 23rd and um, as, as you heard us going through the, the minutes, there are lots of things to talk about. Um, I guess I would frame this off of that statement in that there's, there's enough to talk about here that um, I think that the the best way for us to address it is to give you a list of requirements and then to to have uh, an engineer um, draft up a plan that we can then review for having those requirements met. Okay. Um, so, I've come up with um, I've, I've broken things down uh, into different topics. The first one that I've got is um, the fill and replacement of the outlet stream. Um, so there's about 175 feet of stream that was filled with um, the uh, 12 inch um, pipe yes and then covered over with uh, with loam yep yep um, so that's I was going to kind of mention that is if we're going to kind of on that that um, side uh, I was going to take the the last 20 feet of that culvert and take it out and put that back to natural seems we're going to do a natural setting on that side there's really no need for that last section of uh of culvert north of the, pro the, the property north end line, of the property yeah. where it keep, where it comes out of the pond into the wetlands i wonder the 24 section so i was going to suggest taking out that last section and you know bringing it back to a, just a, a ravine like it was, mm -hmm. um, just letting it grow back in natural. 
And that oh. was the and that was the most recent. You you added you you had a section that uh, you put in that looks like maybe your road. You know, it was your yep. primary road through, yep. and then you added that. What was it like a hundred? foot section and so you're talking about the 20 feet just at the end of that 100 foot section just to be clear the last 20 right before you where the to outlet the, is right to the, yeah exactly yeah so that side doesn't really concern me a lot so i'd suggest i was going to suggest that we take that out uh -huh. at least that section sure and let that all grow back in natural on that side because like i said i want to put fruit trees and, mm -hmm. and we discussed that with the blueberries and all that stuff um I came up with, me and my wife come up with a couple ideas okay. that are marked out there for you on the papers. I don't can see it. I don't get on glasses, but. Yeah. Do you, Scott, want to stop at each bullet point or do you want to go through everything? I'm not sure what I, the I think best. it's best to stop at each bullet point. Okay, all right. Is it better, do you want to give me a list and let me go over it or is it stuff that you want to address now? I think I think we will have a list for you. Okay. Um, so I, I appreciate you taking the time and showing us around the property. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, right, there was a lot more activity there than I expected, and you know, seeing sort of the sequence of disturbance and and the, you know, the amount of activity and change on the property, you know, right adjacent to the wetland was a little bit more worrisome than maybe when I first you know before we got there at least to me okay. um so i i think you know we've sort of you know on site there looking around and all and coming up with some ideas and that you know that 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 area that you're just talking about is certainly you know a significant one so i um you know we have some ideas for you i think you know but i okay. don't know do you want to well I, i'd like yeah, to uh, illuminate the issue a little bit more um and I commented on it in the minutes um, that there appears to have been uh, an intermittent stream at the end of that pipe um, where the stream came out that in turn flowed into the wetlands near right. the, the Lions Club area. Yep. Yep. Um, and it looks like the fill has gone right up to, if not covered, that intermittent stream as well, um, where those four large boulders are. So you're all the way over at the north <laughs> with a big property the big boulder is yeah. on the other side of that i showed you not the not the really big boulder uh, these are uh oh okay yeah yeah i got you what, five feet yep. diameter yep. or yep. so yeah, gotcha. okay we're still on the same side all right yep um it went from about that culvert as you saw the culvert sticking out of the ground still so that's there was like literally no fill there then it got you know more so as you went to the north end yeah. so i noticed that when we were there there was no evidence of outflow from the culvert a recent outflow anyway um i would expect to see at least some matting down of vegetation or something we haven't really had a whole lot plus where i showed you by the big boulder right, let me finish though okay um I, my suspicion is that the reason for that is not that there hasn't been a lot of precipitation um, but that we, there's the other outlet at the south end of the pond and that that's taking the the volume of water that you know uh, compensating for the volume that would have gone out to the yes, north I believe so um, so that's a that's a really pivotal point there um, per the ordinance there's not supposed to be any dredging or filling in, in a stream um, so the, the stream has been completely replaced, but then the other issue is that, you know, the potentially, uh, from what I can see from the maps, from the aerial photos, um, there's also that intermittent stream that's been affected. And the flow <clears throat> to that wetland, and I, it looks like there were wetlands at the north as well, and probably, um, you know, around the intermittent stream, there were some wetlands um that whole system is is um disrupted now so um you know everything downstream of that is i believe dried up or going to going to dry up okay. 
So I, I know you've got a lot on the on the property there, a lot to to do. And I'd like to make things as easy for you as possible. On the other hand, um, I've got to uphold my duty to you know to the sure. city to enforce yep. the ordinance. Um, my recommendation would be to remove the pipe and uh, restore some of the grade, at least, um, you know, a gentle slope within, I don't know what it would, what it would take, but to have um, a slope two feet down into the what was the former um, stream bed and um, that's my recommendation but the uh, commission is you know will have their own ideas so I, I would just add to, to kind of put it in the whole context like, so you you know you're already interested in revegetating that side right like we were out there talking yeah. about yeah. You know, you've got a list of plants that you're already thinking about. And so all of that would be really integral to what Scott's mentioning, right? So it would be, you'd be going in and doing a bit more disturbance right off the bat, uh, removing more than 20 feet of that, that pipe, grading that out so that there's drainage into that wetland again. Okay. So... That disturbance is one thing, but then it would be really critical to, to get your, you know, whatever plants, you know, we work through or you decide upon to get that started in there. Because if you don't, then I don't think that that bank's going to hold probably and you're going to lose, you know, over time, that's just going to erode away. So um, it really fits in in a lot of ways to what you're already thinking about, except you know, I know that you wanted that area flat and having that, you know, putting that pipe in was part of that. But, but as Scott says, that, that is a, that's a major disruption to an important, you know, ecosystem. Right. And so restoring that would be a huge benefit. I can see the 20 foot pipe in spots that are, you know, if you want to put, take three feet off the top or something, I mean, and I, it's been, this has been over years. Some of this is five, ten years. Mm -hmm. All I'm doing is creating more havoc for the wildlife if I go in and just start destroying this place again. I mean, it's established again already. <laughs> the well, point is now to try and do the minimal and leave it alone, just like you know, the whole property. Cause I, I understand doing, and I agree about around the pond. Yeah. Um, and leaving one from the right. culvert over, leaving that alone by my, my fishing yeah. area from the culvert all the way over to the big rock. Mm -hmm. um, Ten foot <coughs> swath, putting in on vegetation. I, that's all great. Yeah. I think I would like to do though is those small pines that are over. I'd like to leave the birches and rip those small pine trees out, so I can continue the shrubs all the way around. For two reasons: one, so it looks uniform, and two, so I can actually see that rock back there, which I used to be able to. So that was another suggestion well, was those pines are just, where they're on the banks and stuff, they're just not a structural tree. I cut trees for a living, so I know it, I'm a little bit about that. <clears throat> I'd love to take those out and then put the same shrubs all the way around. So it doesn't look stupid, more or less, because it's kind of, yeah. so that's, that's one okay. point. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of trying to roll with you guys here. So, <laughs> Right, and I, I think, you know, clearly we want to work with you and, yeah. and try to get you to a place that, you know, you've rehabbed some of that area. But I, it's also important to understand that, that you have highly disturbed that area. That soil is compacted. Um, it's not going to be easy to just get anything going in there without any work. You know, just, just as is, as you just said, you know, hey, I've already done improvements in there. I think our counter would be that you, you have not done improvements. You've hurt those systems, okay. those wildlife, those systems that are important to wildlife. And so um, I think, 
you know, I, I get that, you know, what, what you were trying to do and everything, yeah. but, but it, it really did disturb an important area. And so, you know, our job, and as Scott mentioned, is that, you know, there's rules that we, and ordinances that we follow. And so trying to balance, and this is what I kind of struggled with out there, right? It was like, you know, it's so disturbed, do we disturb it more to reset it? And I think by right. rule, we need to do that, right? What are you resetting? I'm not sure. Well, whether it's, whether it's eight from, feet or six feet or four feet, what are you resetting? Well, see, I can't I'm give not, you. That's where you lose me. I, I can't. I don't have the um, technical know-how to tell you, you know, what that grade should be or anything like that. There's going to have to be some experts, I think, to do that. But, but what we can say is, you know, you disrupted that stream going in, two streams potentially and those could be restored and that would help that whole area now the stream you're talking about with the culvert yeah yep it, this one on the other side has kind of taken over now if you want i can put a big ass rock there excuse my language and stop that from coming out you'll see the pond rise when you see the pond rise you'll see that culvert work again because it's like this right now inches right. off I, so that's one of the problems. Second problem, I need to show you guys that it was in. So when Mark Jacobs made me dig test holes, I told him where this culvert went. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, it doesn't. It goes 10 feet over here this way. I go, I put it in. He goes, I want you to dig right there. And I go, if I dig right there, I'm going to pull my culvert up. He says, it probably 10 feet over that way. Well, I went like that, and I dug my culvert up. I said, now what? Who fixes it? Uh, I ain't my problem. Ain't my fault. Mm -hmm. Well, it is your fault. You told me to dig there. So, there's one spot where I dug the culvert up and snapped in half. Mm -hmm. So there's dirt in between culvert, culvert, about this long. On that 100 foot piece. Yeah. So you. So that's new. So the water's probably coming out of the pond, but it's filtering out there and not coming out the end mm -hmm. because it has an outlet. I wasn't going to complicate things that day and do that. So, but. Good old Mark Jacobs, yeah. He, you know, he's trying to tell me where I put my, I put it in. Right. I mean, I so know there's you, a split right now. If I fix that, I guarantee you mm -hmm. that that culvert runs because I lasered it out. So I do. For sure. It, I, I so. feel like you know you have this history with all of this, and and it's long and complicated it and, and all of that. <laughs> and I and I imagine it's you know something I never should have did. But. Yeah, and, and so I, I, I just, you know, maybe you could see this as an opportunity to, to, to you know, fix some of that. And, and I know, you know, it, it's easy to look at that and think you did fix it, that, you know, to, to change things so that your property worked the best it could for you. And, and I get that, that you would, you know, you're looking at your property thinking, I, I need access to here, I want to do this there. But in doing that you change the environment a lot and and so there are some not insane you know uh things that you can do there to sort of to, to reset stuff and still i think have access to your property the way that you want yeah like i said i don't mind taking a couple i mean i don't think i need to take all of it out but um i think as tonight goes i should Maybe uh, Dana can give me a list of what you recommend, suggest, uh, demand, whatever the word might be, and kind of head forward from there. I mean, I don't sure. need an engineer to tell me how to. I, I do excavation, demolition, tree search. This is what I do for a living. Yeah, I, I know how to grade stuff. I know how to put a ten foot ten foot slope, you know, ten degrees, one one you know one sure. inch per. I, that's I do water sewer, I do all this stuff. Yeah. I don't need to spend any more money on an engineer. So if you want from the pond to, to the edge a six degree slope, then that's what I do. Mm -hmm. It's is what I do. <laughs> so I can I do just want to inter interject that we're gonna need a, a plan from an engineer. It, it's just it's it's too complex not to have one. Yeah, I appreciate you know, the work, the effort that you would do to to put that together. But um, it's just too too much for us to um, to really cover that way. Um, and as uh, Ke Kevin was saying, 
you know, as far as restoring the grade, um, you know, at the at the north end of the property. Uh, right now, it's it's pretty severe. It's um, I, I don't know what the percent grade is at the at the end there, but it's it's a pretty steep drop off. We you know we don't have the tools to um, to assess what would be the the proper grade to restore there. An, an engineer would have to make that call. Um, you, you know you probably have to have a couple engineers involved, um, a wetlands engineer um, and a uh, a civil engineer. Um, you know I, I hate to put that on you. It's just. That's what we have. Any suggestions of what I do with all this material? Well, I mean, that, that's that's not for us, though. You know, when we went out there, you had a, you know, Scott mentioned an eight-foot drop or so from where you had moved things, and, I mean, that just changes everything. And, and you know, I, I think our combined expertise here, uh, we're comfortable in talking a lot about uh, 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 over a large amount of subjects, but not engineering or not what your, you know, what that what it will take to restore or get something close to restoring what was there on the property. What an engineer don't. <laughs> Well, we're talking about, so think of it as an environmental engineer, maybe, who, you know, that would be considering drainage and wetland, you know, maintaining the wetlands. Just take it all like out to the, to the bottom, just, just lay it out like that. I, th there's probably a compromise in there, you know. Um, I mean, that, that's why it's called a conditional use permit application, because, um, you know, we, we're here to make recommendations on, um, on approving uh, an application conditionally, um, which is basically a compromise. Um, you know, what, what can stay, what has to go. Um, and uh, so we're, we're not suggesting that, th even if we would like it to happen, there's no way to get, get it back to what it was before. <clears throat> um, there's just no going back. So. You know the, the the best solution here will be what's feasible, <clears throat> um, and and what's practical. And when am I allowed to start doing this? Or can I just start digging some of this out tomorrow? Or no, we, we need the plan. Uh, we'll need to review and um, and recommend the plan before that, <clears throat> and then it will have to go to the planning board. There's no problem. We put in a. 25-foot berm along my drive all the way down the road at edge to, so I can utilize this material is that, a, I mean, is that all right that would be um, <clears throat> that have to go through the at least the, the planning board I assume that's not our purview uh, if it's out of the wetland buffer it's out of this board's purview um, we can talk about it in our office if there's any other sort of permits, What if there's any other requirements that you need to do, or if it's just something that I would be permissible. About 30 grand to pull that stone wall back, so I'm off the yeah. 25 feet, so behind that stone wall I can just build as high as I want. <laughs> we can talk about that <laughs> in um, our office during regular office hours. The right. commission talks about their concern and purview would be just the wetland buffer. All right. Well, I think at this point I'd like to uh, have you guys send me what you have. Losing a little bit of patience at the present moment. So I need, I need to see what you guys suggest off time. Stay with off us. Time, yeah. um, you know, uh, unless you want to come back and, and continue this at the, at the next meeting, we've got a lot more to talk about with you here. Um, but if, if you wanted to come back, we can continue. Yeah, I'd like to see what you have first so I get a little insight. Don't even bring up the trees. Let's, not, let's put a halt on that, too. Well, um, unless, unless it's something you want to know right this minute. That's We're, as, a, as a commission, we can't meet um, together without posting uh, a meeting okay. and meeting formally. So we can't discuss this unless we're all here together. That's fine. Um, 
you're basically telling me I gotta tear this whole freaking backyard all apart again, take all everything. I mean, I'm just. Uh, well, we it, haven't gotten to that point yet. Oh, uh, we, we've only we've only started with the stream. Um, right, that's what I mean. So it only goes downhill from here. <laughs> uh, it, it's going to be hard. I, you know, it's it's a lot to do. Um, but it's up to you. We can continue now, or we can we can. Let's reschedule. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm sorry, I missed that. Reschedule. Let's reschedule. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I need to. Uh, if you can send me some stuff that your suggestions and stuff, email me over everything you have, so that way I can spend time to sit and talk to some people. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, because this ain't quite the way I expected this to go tonight. So I'm a little uh, getting irritated. So I don't want to. I want to keep this on a friendly stage. Much appreciated. And it's going to start going south on me in a, minute, in a couple of minutes. So. Okay. <laughs> So I we'll need, need a, we'll need a motion. so much of the time with me. So. We need a motion to continue. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion and a second to continue. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'll say Thank you, guys. See you next month. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Can you do a formal motion for the next step? His second application as well? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> okay, are you ready? Item B, Michael Davis, Davis is seeking a conditional use permit for tree removal within the riparian and wetland buffer. Our property located at 25 Otis Road in the residential single family R1 uh, district assessor's map. 31 lot 46 CUP 7 2023. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second to continue. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. <laughs> New business. Item A, review of rules and procedures. Do you want me to talk on it? Yes, please. Okay, so it's a little, you're not, no one is in trouble or did anything um, I did wrong. feel that way. I apologize <laughs> for making everyone feel that way. Um, this was, um, when we were putting together Sean's membership book, we, I believed that the most recent rules of procedure were from 2005. We had some that were labeled as draft, saved in our files from 2018. I missed originally the um, adopted in January 2019. So we just were looking to clarify with the commission and ensure that we had the most up-to-date rules of procedure. It doesn't hurt to look at them periodically. And then we can circulate and make sure everyone has their most up-to-date in the um, their handbooks. The I did note something, um, I don't know if anyone has any revisions that they'd like to have. Um, one thing I had noted is that it indicates, and I think this is just old, and I don't remember where it is, that you meet at 7 p.m. And as long as I've been here, you have met at 6 p.m. And I don't know if that's something you would like to update in your rules of procedure. Yeah, I think this is a good opportunity to um, go through this and, and touch on some parts that may be improved. 2019 is fairly recent, but it seems like a long time ago that we did this. Yeah. It's your uh, document. Um, it's just regular board business. You can make changes um, whenever. Just we, we um, just have to vote on it yep. next meeting. <coughs> the meeting time is under H meetings, H1. It says 7 p.m. So... <coughs> One thing that had been removed between uh, from the 2005 uh, rules to uh, 2019 
was the nomination. Um, previously, it was that the mayor uh, nominated and uh, or a uh, simple majority, I'm sorry, the mayor would make the nomination confirmed by a simple majority of city council or nominated by an at-large councillor and confirmed by two-thirds uh, majority of the city council. That second part had been struck from the current rules. I'm not sure why that was, but I rather liked it there. I think it's a good, flexible solution. Any, any thoughts on that? To revert to either the either the mayor or an at-large councillor. I'm sorry. Could you just really quickly say that again? What the what is what you want back in and what's missing? Yeah. Previously, the nomination had to be done by either the mayor or an at-large councillor. Currently, it's just the mayor, okay. and I'm suggesting to, to revert to uh, both. Yeah. Either. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. oh. Got me. I can check. There's mic problems. Um, oh, sorry. That's my fault. Um, so, yeah, I'm wondering if there's a, a reason why those shifted, um, why it moved out, and why it was two thirds for a council versus simple for a mayor. Kind of sounds like something that got pulled for. I can confirm with Director Mears and see if that's a charter thing. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, kind of Could be. Um, under alternates, number two for membership. Um, it's not quite what's in the RSA where it says um, that one, one alternate member may be appointed following the procedure for membership to serve whenever a regular member of the commission is not able to fulfill their responsibilities. I believe that the only difference for the alternate is that they don't vote. So they have all the regular responsibilities, but they only vote when um, uh, a regular member is absent. <coughs> And um, I did check that in the RSA. Any comments on that? We should probably match the RSA. Um, number six, associates, <clears throat> that had been struck. So it's, an, it's uh, number six in the um, 2005 version. And it reads, <clears throat> the commission may appoint associate, uh, may appoint associate or advisory non-voting members who have exhibited an interest and dedication to the goals of conservation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Such members may attend meetings of the cons of the commission and serve on all committees, and perform other duties as assigned to them by chair by the chairperson. These appointments shall not exceed two years. Wh while it's it may be redundant to have it in both places, <clears throat> you know, it, I think it, it we might consider to strike anything from here that's already codified in the RSA or, or keep it um, as an explicit, you know, reminder locally that this is what we do. But I would, if, if we're going with striking everything that's in the RSA, then strike, keep that st struck. Um, otherwise, um, Add it back. Wait. 
I, Are generally... you talking about number six under membership that has nothing next to it? I apologize. It's yeah. and you're talking about what was there, right? Yeah. All right. I'll... Yeah, we didn't provide the paper copies of the 2005 one, so I apologize for that. Um, for that, it's just the 2019 ones that were given to you guys in paper confused. format. The 2005 ones got emailed out originally. Um, okay. But sorry for that. We can provide previous notes too on revisions if you want to con have further discussion at next month's too. I just wanted to, to make sure up anyway, next month. I was following. So I think in general, uh, you know, we, we took this approach with the, um, the last uh, revision of the uh, wetland ordinance. If it's already covered in the RSA, then we don't cover it here. Um, just to um, you know, avoid any ambiguity, or you know, if the RSA changes, then we're obligated to keep up with it. Right. So if that's if that's what the approach we want to take, then I would I would say just leave it out. Um, And if that's the approach that we take, uh, I think that several items under membership would go, including number one. That's in the RSA. Um, Number two, number six, and that and that's it from that section for membership. I suggest we want to treat this a little bit differently when we do the wetland ordinance for RSA purposes. We lose context on pieces here if mm -hmm. we strip some of those. Um, the alternate section kind of stands on its own, but if we're talking about number of commissioners, roles of alternates, mm -hmm. if we have, if a, somebody interested in this has to bounce between this and the RSA to figure out what's going on, it's not too mm -hmm. useful. In that case, then we probably should review this every couple of years at least. Mr. Collins, what do you think? I agree. You can put that in your rules of procedure too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that we need to give the secretary more responsibilities. <laughs> Um, I did have more. <coughs> Where's my two thousand nineteen? Um, under section E, rights, powers, and duties of the commission. Number four says the commission may provide coordination among various organizations and groups interested in the natural resources of the city may conduct public outreach programs to support conservation activities and programs. <coughs> the first uh, sentence of that actually should, should be must. Uh, that's um, uh, in, in the uh, RSA. Um, so it's not optional for us to coordinate among uh, various organizations. Um, also, 
under musts, we must conduct research into local land and water resources, keep an index of open space, uh, let's see, keep an index of all open space and natural aesthetic and ecological areas, all marshlands, swamps, and other wetlands. This is an RSA. Which is uh, 36A. Um, so as far as rights, it's kind of rights kind of strikes me funny. Um, I guess it means what we may do, um, but we may recommend programs for the protection, development, or better utilization of all areas of um, the index, the natural resources index. May intervene with the with state applications for dredging and filling. <clears throat> or sand and gravel excavation. And then under finances, um, section F. <clears throat> is it codified anywhere about current use funding? Uh, that just probably in some sort of city document that is outside of this. Okay. All right. It doesn't, I mean, it talks about funding here, but it doesn't talk about where it comes from. Well, it does. It says public donations. So the city funds, the, the commission receives annual allotment from the city council to conduct its business, which isn't directly true, right? We, as a matter of practice, we get it from, uh, or as a matter of statute, we, we get it from the from land that's taken out of current use. Correct. You have your current conservation fund. There's no specific budget in the city for conservation right. commission. Correct. Yeah. So that that's a little bit funny there. Number one, and then number two, public donations. Um, payment for services. Uh, that's for us to pay. So yeah, I just want to make sure that somewhere it's codified that current use um, changes uh, go to our fund. I can look into where that is, language is kept. Okay, thank you. Uh, you already mentioned seven o'clock to six o'clock, and that's all I have. Oh, wait a minute, that's not all I have. So regarding voting on changes to this document, um, I already called out that at the end, Section J, Amendments, the way it reads now is these rules and procedures may be amended or suspended at any regular meeting of the commission by a two-thirds majority vote, period. Amendments presented at any regular meeting may not be voted on until the next regular meeting. So I understand the spirit of that, but it sounds a little bit clunky to me, so I would change that to say these rules of procedures may be amended or suspended by two-thirds majority vote period. Amendments pres presented at any regular meeting may not be voted on until the next regular meeting. I can say that again if you need me to. So do you have um, 
have a document in front of you from 2019? You don't? Yeah. So, <clears throat> Section J amendments. Basically, I would strike, I would replace uh, from at any regular meeting, I would replace at any regular meeting of the commission by a two thirds majority vote. with by a two thirds majority vote. And that's it. Keep the second sentence as it is. Any other comments? Is it the, uh, uh, where is it now? So I, I freely admit I did think I, I was probably in trouble and read this only as a refresher, not as an edited document or thinking about things that way. But um, one thing that did jump to mind was just based on my experience with the Mallee Farm stuff is the committees and the subcommittees. Um, I never really did get a solid answer on, you know, the membership issues with the subcommittee, uh, how we would, you know, how the, who can be on, who cannot be on. I don't know if this is the place for that or not to kind of work that out or spell it out that if we do form a working committee or a subcommittee, this is, you know, this is the composition that you have to have. Or here are the people who are off limits. Right, yeah, either way, you know, who can be on, who can be, who can't be. I think maybe that's a better approach, who can't be on uh, the committee, so, uh, which I, st I cannot provide any information on because I still don't know, but. Yeah, I think that goes along with what Jeremy was saying. And uh, I think that would be a good idea to call out here. Okay. If you want to send me edits individually, not as a full group email, I can provide a red line copy for your next meeting. Sure. If that would. Yeah. Would you mind looking into that for next meeting? Um, yes, I not will. not allowed to be on a subcommittee? Yep. Thanks. And uh, it's probably good that we keep it until the next meeting anyway, because we've got such a scant quorum here. We ready to move on? Item B, GPS for monitoring. Not sure what that is. Oh. A, a GPS app. Okay. Is there, is there a mic on? Yeah, <clears throat> I think that was just a, a comment that Dale had made when we were doing the uh, the, the um, lily pond walk. <laughs> to make sure that you're, you're walking the boundary and yep. um, pointing you know, and adding points where you see them. Yep, that's right. Um, so device. I'm not sure it makes that much sense, just considering our phones are GPS devices. Mm. But I yeah, think I. Sorry, go ahead if you were. No, I was just going to say I think it was just a matter of um, consistency and different apps and who who knows how to use it and stuff. And mm. I mean, maybe an approach is for all of us to to agree on an app. Right. You know, that we all, because 
you know, you can go out with, I mean, you know, depending on the, the quality of the receiver and the handheld, you know, you, you might gain a little bit over, or you'll gain some over your phone. But you can also, you know, on your phone, you can look at boundaries and, you know, more intuitively know what the error is in a way, right? Like, oh, does this make sense? I'm, yeah, it does. You know, where the hand, handheld GPS, depending on how much you get into it, you're not necessarily going to have the background maps and all. I mean, you can do that, but it's that it takes some some doing and and subscriptions and things like that. So, I think it would make sense for you know to talk through different uh, freeware that's out there. You know, I use Gaia, and I that's can put I yeah, I yeah. can put boundaries on there. And so, you know, when Sarah and I did. What did we do? We mapped the boundary of the Lily Pond area. You know, we used a, I, I had access to a, a, a very sensitive receiver because that was, we were walking a boundary that we were putting signage up on. But I think in most cases you don't need that. So maybe just agreeing on an app. And then if, if not everybody's comfortable with that, we can just get together after a meeting or something and run through it. One thing that people have brought up is um, some sort of layer to, so you can tell that you're still on the property and where you are on the property. Is there some sort of? So, yeah, I mean, potentially uh, Gaia, for example, would accept this. So you could go, I mean, it takes some know-how, right? But you could go to Granite, download the conservation land layer. You have to convert it. Um, and then you, you can move that into an app, not all apps, but in Gaia, is different if if you pay for it versus the free version you know it, so you know i i could i i could down like i have that layer i've downloaded loaded that that's how i've made the maps for mally farm and all and i could share that with everybody get that on your on the phone as an option to light i think you just light it up you know as a, um an overlay in gaia so so and, granite has the format that gaia supports you have to convert it, yeah, okay. but it but it's doable. It's a little tricky, you know, but I, I successfully did it, and I, but I've only done it once, you know. So we could we could do that. Like I could go back, get that updated map while I have access to things and share that amongst the group. If everybody was comfortable with Gaia, um, we could, you know, figure out a way that everybody knows to get it in. And then it should be just you turn it on. Like a That's like right. a different map layer or whatever, you know, going from aerial photos to uh, topo or whatever. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it was. We were both using Gaia. Uh, Dale was a little bit more unfamiliar with it mm -hmm. and just using the free layers, so nothing yep. was purchased, and there was a little bit of um, ambiguity. But it's just, mm -hmm. you know, but I think an internal little workshop where we helped each other out would be probably better than yep. spending money on. Extra yeah. devices, you know. Yeah. The um, I noticed that the the conservation overlay is um, a little bit off mm -hmm. on granite. Uh, it, a, a better layer would be um, the parcels. Is that also the available? parcels are available? Yeah. The I think I sent you what I had at one point because I I have there's no way to know. There's the, there's no metadata with that to tell me okay this is from twenty you know twenty or whatever, and so you know we could make a layer too you know so we could take the granite uh, conservation lands you know uh, look at the parcel layer or property but it's property boundaries that we can get through granite and merge those you know. So it's just it's just about who has that information and then getting it to and I'm happy to do that. I mean it'll take you know I'm not great on that stuff, but I can do it. So I just never found out how to make sure I had the most up to date information. I ran into a roadblock on that. And frankly, I mean if we have the city does have a a, a GIS person because Sean and um, Doug. I think talk to them or at least track them down so that that may even exist already and we just have to get that from them yeah the city the tax map uses access gis is mm -hmm. that maybe something that we could also pull from so i so i go on there a lot um 
I cannot remember if I was able to to pull a shape file off there or not. And that's what you need to be able to do. So Granite, Granite has that same kind of viewer, but you can actually then download that portion of of the um, like the tax map, the boundaries or something like that. I've done so. it before. It's just uh, the formats were so proprietary that I, you know I had a hard time importing them into different apps. For sure. So so when you pull down from Granite. It really it goes seamlessly into um, Esri products like ArcGIS and all. If you don't have that, you've got to fumble around to try to get it in a format. So it does get messy. But So I have access to those other software, so I could pull everything if we you know, combined information so that we know we have, okay, this is the conservation land map for Summersworth. We pull in those different ta data sets. I make one file that we all share and then you know, put it on Gaia or whatever we agree upon. And then as you're out in the woods, you would be able to see your little dot you know, in that polygon if, if everything went well. So by Friday? Uh, if you can get me the properties. <laughs> so it's not, it isn't that big of a deal really. One, I mean, you know, it, it, it takes me a little bit to re-remember how to do some of these things, but once we have the, the area, and maybe it's just like I give you the conservation land one that I pull off and you, and you just, you know, we, we start working off of that um, yeah. to what to add to. Sure, yeah, that sounds good. I cover it. All right. Thank you. Uh, any new business to come before the commission? Actually, yeah. Any new business? Uh, you do have your Conservation Commission 2024 schedule. Um, I can wait till next month to ask this question further or ask it again. In July, the first week, the zoning board meeting falls on the 3rd of July. So they are contemplating readjusting their meeting for July. If they want to meet on that Wednesday, which was your Conservation Commission standard meeting night, is there flexibility to schedule for you guys to meet earlier in the evening? Or is the 6 o'clock really the preferred and you guys want to stay? I'm just data collecting for to talk with them as well. We did talk about this. It's just for July? Just for July. Yeah. Correct, yes. Uh, let's see if I put anything in my calendar. So we, you were thinking we would go like 5 to 6 and they would go 6 to... You or? could go to... Um, they meet at 7. Oh, okay. So um, it would just that you guys would wrap up by at latest probably 6.45 and shift over and... Then the zoning board would meet if, and that's only if they have applications too, um, but which we'd know in advance. If it's something that the commission feels strongly about that they'd like to keep their normal meeting time and they do not want to amend that, um, that is fine. And I will talk to the zoning board about alternate evenings. It's just I'm data collecting for them. I, I don't mind changing, uh, making it earlier would be difficult for me. Okay. Hard time getting nearby six. Okay. That's acceptable. Yeah, I'm I can too. talk to them about alternate evenings. And I know that's <laughs> typically a difficult time frame for Jeremy, too, earlier. I'm near Jeremy. Like, you, Jeremy. Be a little bit closer now because I can make phase, so that makes it easier. But if Scott's tied up. I can, I'll talk to them about alternate nights. Thank you, though. Okay, old business. Easement monitoring. I don't believe there's any. Item B, any correspondence regarding old business? Um, we do have uh, a series of um, letters from Shane Conlon, the code enforcement officer on uh, city treaty list. Um, some of that correspondence made it into the packet. And um, 
I guess to frame it, um, the, the catalyst for, for this was uh, to replace damaged uh, and um, ailing trees in the, in the plaza. And that's um, on the sheets that I passed out before the meeting. There's highlighted trees that are uh, recommended for removal or trees that can wait or that have no, no current issues. So I think um, there are two things to address. One is the, the tree list app. The larger issue is the tree list, um, and we already have uh, a list of recommended trees in the tree ordinance. So um, I think we had talked about updating that anyway, um, because certain trees are now uh, subject to um, disease and. Uh, and climate issues and some some of the trees that were on the list um, can be um, fragile I guess for lack of a better word so we we're talking about doing that anyway and I, I think we could go through uh, Mr. Conlon's list in conjunction with the, with that list and come up with a new recommendation for that ordinance um, but in the meantime, I think we should make a recommendation as the, as the tree board on the plaza plantings. Um, Scott, just one note before we get into the plaza pieces. Um, I think Shane raises a good point about some native species not really being applicable in constrained areas like cities. Um, that's definitely well taken. Um, I think what we would want to look at is just guiding principles here is that we want to encourage native trees in environments where they're likely to thrive. Um, the other plants, we've got a few things on this tree list that are known issues for us. Honey locust and ginkgo jump out at the top. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not really a thou shalt plant natives. It's a plant them where it makes sense and let's trim out some of the iffy ones on the list. The other thing I note is uh, we just got rezoned. Um, about three weeks ago, the USDA published, USDA published new zone maps, and as a result of climate change, we're now in zone six, so that may open some additional plantings that could be useful here. Thank you. Yeah, um, I agree with um, non-natives, the non-natives point. I, I think um, a, a good approach would be, unless there's no suitable native for that, application um, then we then we don't go with uh, with non-natives um, uh, for a couple of reasons one is the is for wildlife value and um, and then the other would be for a uh, risk of uh, introduced pests or um, or for escape of of the non-native um, for stuff that's already been flagged as aggressive uh, in the Northeast. So I don't know whether everyone is ready to go through that list. It took me a few hours last night to go through and I did fa find several that were either invasive or aggressive um, and um, a lot that may not be viable in our zone um, and then s several that are already on the, um, the the lists for the ordinance um, does anyone need more time to go over this and maybe we pick it back up at the next meeting or or are you ready to talk about it now I mean I <clears throat> I haven't pieced through the list. I, I'll, I'm pretty comfortable going with no na uh, no exotics, non natives, and and that being the what what we promote. Um, 
I understand the logic a little bit, but I also think that in, in most situations, there's a native species that could be planted in the most hostile area and still do well. I think, Jeremy, you bring up a really good point about the rezoning, too. And so we have, you know, there's already been this idea of like assisted migration, essentially, you know, planting trees from further south. So uh, it maybe that's an approach. We add some of those trees that are, you know, that haven't traditionally been looked at up here and that may broaden the list. So I would feel better about that approach as being proactive for climate change than just opening it up for, you know, oh, this is a tough site, let's put in, you know, species, whatever. And um, and I would also keep Elm off of the list. Just, uh, I only mentioned that because that he, he pointed that out as an option. Yeah, there's Elm and we've talked about Hemlock and Beach. Yeah, right, so yeah. Definitely. And red pine. <coughs> Excuse me. So I, I so I guess if, if, if you would want, you know, uh, tree by tree um, recommendations or, you know, going through this, what what should stay, what shouldn't, I, I, I haven't done that yet. So I would just ask to put that off. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to address it all. <clears throat> um, just um, to give uh, Mr. Common do you know, do attention on it. And I think I really like his approach of, you know, adding the cultivar that's available. You know, I, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's just pull some of these other, you know, these species out that just we don't need. Yeah. Um, so what about the, uh, the plaza? Two foresters here. So, uh, so okay, the the tree ID next to the dots is what would be what is there? What is what what would be planted? Where is that? Am I There's, it's not called out. The this is a like an assessment. Yeah, the the ask is what should be planted. There. Oh, okay, I thought. I mean, uh, <clears throat> AJ Dupere came up with, with, he made the call on this on what he recommended to be removed and what mm -hmm. could wait and what's good. Um, <laughs> so basically, I think there's one good one <laughs> that. It's the honey locust. Oh, it's honey locust, yeah. Um, <clears throat> for preference, um, pre when we first originally brought this up um, after a meeting, um, Shane had presented to replace the trees with, I believe, crabapple and at the time honey locust. This kind of has brought it down to this point where we're at now. Um, we've met with AJ. We did an assessment of the trees and how they're doing. As you can see, AJ, he did not want to condemn all of our trees, so he did give some of them a generous um, rating. Um, one of them has a 1.5. <laughs> um, but... Um, I don't recall exactly if there, I understand that the honey locust was rejected from um, recommendation, but I don't know what the stance was regarding the crab apple that had been previously um, presented by Shane for replacement trees. Um, but they are looking, I think he, they are looking to do that in the spring, hopefully, I think, or at least next next year or so, within the 2024 at some point, I believe. I, I mean, the first thing that jumps out to me is is kind of exactly what we've been talking about with for one of the reasons to do the tree inventory and getting a, you know, getting an idea of how we improve resilience, you know, in our urban forests, and so that that that's almost on that strip a monoculture of you know it's it's that if I'm following what the map is showing and when you know we've got you know probably 90 percent crab apple on that front um, and so you know that that may be something that we would want to diversify with some other trees as well not that crab apple is bad but having that many right there um, obviously the ash the ash is probably dead or dying already um there's some maple in there that what are those rated as sort of weight 
Are there any trees that have no current issues? Um, the locust just needed to be pruned. Oh right, okay. So he's, uh, yeah, I didn't. I couldn't even see that green dot. Whatever grows there should be salt tolerant, right? And um, mm -hmm. medium, small canopy. And a hard nexus point for native salt tolerant and medium is. Fruit trees would be good, but um, you guys want to take till next month to yeah take some time to go through it. I think that would be good. I don't know enough about when you start breaking in the tolerances of you know yeah maybe there just aren't a lot of options there or there's a way to variety wise mix that up I, I don't know so that I think that would be I'd become more comfortable with that than giving a recommendation Comfort, more comfortable with what oh sorry with uh, waiting okay. to give a okay. yeah I think Sh Sean was on like that was a, that, that's what you were suggesting as well Sean yes, yeah I am. yeah works for me okay it's cool. uh, but we should uh, hold on it all right. So we need a motion. Or is it on the agenda? It's uh. It's not on the agenda. Under correspondence. So I guess that doesn't require a motion. Cool. Okay, member items, subcommittee reports and reports. I'm sorry, member items, subcommittee items and reports. Number one, wildlife management plan for Lily Pond parcel. I don't have anything on that. Number two, invasive sub invasives plan subcommittee report. Dale Smith Kenyon. Dale's not here. Um, number three, exploration of formal conservation of Mallee Farm City parcel. I don't think a I haven't gotten you the um, plan law contact yet, have I? You have not, but that's okay. We're, I mean, I, 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 you can send me that whenever. Um, just as an overview, since the last meeting, I, I was still, I was waiting to hear from Southeast Land Trust. That that I think is formally dead. I haven't been able to get hold of anybody, get any response. So. I shift it to uh, Society of Protection of New Hampshire Forests. I reached out to their land conservation folks, uh, had a call uh, with one of them. They're, they don't, SPINIF is the acronym, they don't, they've moved away or shifted away from working with cities for the most part. But because of where the, where the Mallee Farm property lays, it's a, a high value. I, I don't remember the category she used, but it's an area that's of interest for conservation. So that doesn't mean that they're going to work with us on this, though. So I, I don't, I still don't know for sure. But there's interest, and then just in that conversation, uh, she mentioned a few, you know, funding streams. Like if we, if we move, even if we were to move alone, you know, with the the lawyer. Uh, there, there's potentially funding for uh, survey, uh, things like that, so um, to formalize the boundaries and all. So it was a good conversation. I'm, I'm going to wait, you know, probably till the new year to go back to them and, and see. She was going to present it, you know, kind of to their group and see what, what type of interest there was. Um, she did mention, I think part of the reason... Well, I don't know if this is the reason, but one of the things with working with cities was that they would get to a point to conserve the land, but there was to do that, there would have to be a citywide vote. And she was asked, she asked about that for us. I did not know the answer to that. So if we formally move to lock down that 
chunk of Mallee Farm for conservation, would that then go to the general public for a vote? It would be a council vote. Council vote. Okay, that's what I, I thought, but I wasn't, okay. Um, so, okay, so there's that. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, the, the survey was a big thing, you know, to be able, because it is a weird, you know, it's a weird site to explain because it's a, what, a 200-acre parcel with, you know, that, that, that chunk kind of partitioned out. Um, but they have people they work with and everything. So I'm, I'm hoping, that, you know, I was really excited about CELT, and, and she's going to reach out to CELT as well and see, you know, what, was the, what their thoughts and all were. So I hope... <laughs> that at least, you know, in January, I'll have an idea of, okay, we're on our own, or we're going to work with somebody on this. So uh, I think that's everything, you know, so it's, I'm thank you for about the council vote uh, for that, to that, that knowledge, because I did not think it went out on general vote, but I wasn't sure. So um, no, for a town, it, it might. Okay. And uh, I will say, I mean, I, I do, it's it's nice that everybody that we're talking about this sees the value in that prop and the importance of it and and the, the connectivity and and the habitat potential there. So nobody has said, ah, what are you doing there? <laughs> so, anyways, I think that's it for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, tree city GP, uh, city tree GPS inventory project. Uh, Mr. Pryor is not here, <clears throat> but I think that. Um, the discussion about the plaza trees uh, is a good indicator that um, you know we're concerned if if you build it will they come you know if if, um, if we put all the effort into coming up with the inventory is anyone going to use it and it looks like maybe yes yeah I think so uh, any other old business that may come before the Commission before we have the lily pond report um, at least I just got an email to me. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Collins, would you be prepared to talk about it or should we wait? It's coming to me. I mean, I haven't been prepared to share with There was nothing, nothing new. Just nothing had been picked up or cleaned up at all. Um, still quite a mess. All right. Yeah, that's still on us to um, coordinate to get the. I think that was a stipulation of the um, of the grant as well that we need to clean that debris up. Yeah. Is that the parcel that Sarah and I put the boundaries up on? Is that the same? Yes. Okay. All right. Right behind the golf course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There was some. Yeah. There was some stuff back there. Yeah. They um, did a um, a report for DES. We need to do an annual report okay. for the for the grant. Okay. Some of the debris and trash has been there for upwards of five years. It looks like. I mean, just the yeah. Of, yeah. There's stuff that's mm -hmm. settled into the yeah. soil. Okay. There's some stuff. The newest stuff looked like it might have been a couple of years ago. Okay, thank you. Uh, and do you have a treasure report? I don't. I do not. Okay. Anyone want to go home? Yeah. You have a motion to do that? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned at 734. Thank you.